And back in the studio is Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week, just a garden segment that she sees what's on top of mind for her. So mm -hmm. uh, we just share that and depart it throughout Northern Arizona and let folks, locals know you can garden. That's right. And, it didn't, and it's not just a guy out there. It's, <laughs> you got a female perspective. You get that softer, pretty feel. Whereas I'm more, we can kill bugs. Let me show you how. Weeds are bad. Gophers should all die. They're underground rats. Okay, you 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 don't. I can do that. You would not do that. Well, <laughs> well I true. wouldn't kill them. But. <laughs> <laughs> you you strike me as a sticky glue trap no, kind of gal. No, no, no. I hate those things. Those are horrible. <laughs> we won't even go down that path. No. People will change the dial or mm -hmm. tune out. So, not go there. what are you going? Are you, I see one uh, Linton Rose. So you or... told me because this is a vlog, so some right? people just hear it on the radio, but some people can watch should, it yeah. as well. You said bring something pretty in that's blue. I mean, yeah. said, you know, it's the end of January, I know. right? <laughs> <laughs> but I am so good. It's, I found something. You did. It's beautiful. And yeah. it's so unusual. So this is a Linton rose, uh, otherwise known as a hellebore. Hellebore. So really cool plant here. It's an, actually an evergreen plant. It likes to bloom when it's cold. So it's one of those few plants that's going to bloom in the cooler temperatures. There is no smell. No smell. It's got a big old waxy, the, the leaves, the mm -hmm. foliage, and the, the, the flower. It's very waxy, mm -hmm. very thick. Very thick. Oh. That's why it's a winter bloomer. Yeah. <laughs> it needs that protection. Just really pretty. Yeah, not a lot of smell, but just a real cool plant. Likes a shadier spot. Uh, through most of the season. This time yeah. of year, it could take full sun and be fine. Uh, you can grow it in the container. You can grow it in the ground. Uh, but just one of those first things that blooms late winter, early spring, if you just have to have something. Evergreen perennial. Uh -huh. This has got foliage on it year-round in the flower garden. Gets up just above maybe a foot high, something yeah. like that. Foot, foot and a half. Nice mound to it. Mm -hmm. And it will take full sun until like May and June. Right. And then it goes, I don't like the sun. <laughs> Give me some shade. And so, it, but it starts blooming. Mm -hmm. What's in bloom now? So yeah. February, March, April, May. Right. It's in bloom and just a great little evergreen plant. So great old containers, mm -hmm. raised beds, wherever yeah. you, and animals don't eat this. So javelina, right. deer. Rabbits, pack rats, don't eat Linton Rose. It's kind of like uh, azaleas and right. dendrums. They just don't bother them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we have two colors. This is the darker color, and then we have a lighter lighter pink one as well. But anyways, I fulfilled my role. Thank I brought you, something pretty. <laughs> when did the first crop of, let's say, pansy show up? So we got, so oh, we got the rose. It's getting looking. close. It's yeah. getting close. Kind of just depends on the weather a little bit. Yeah. So as we're a little warmer consistently, I would say by mid February, yeah. the latest. This is where storms are not our friend. Right. And, and a lot of these are grown in, in uh, let's see, Tucson, something uh, like Fallbrook area uh, of California. Mm -hmm. And these storm, the clouds don't allow they don't let plants <laughs> grow. It's like there's no sunshine. Yeah. So they're in greenhouses or they're out in the yard kind of growing mm -hmm. where it's a little bit warmer, but there's no, there's no sunshine. Right. And they need that to grow, to fill in and to, we don't bring them in until they're ready. They're ready. It's not right. So wildflower seeds, super easy to grow. And this is the time to be thinking about putting them out. Um, but it's basically what, four or five steps we're looking at for wildflower seed. True. So basically you're, you're pick your area you want it to go into. You want probably what, at least five, six hours of sun. Yeah. I would say at least six. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Really more sun, area. more flowers. Right. You're going to rake that area up. You want it, you don't want a lot of seed or other weeds in there. You want it to be fairly clear because you want that no seed. rocks. <laughs> Get rid of the boulders. But you want that seed to make soil contact. Right. So if it's laid on top of a weed or other grass, it's not going to do you any good. Thing. So you're going to have a relatively clear area. You're going to rake it to what about one to two inches down? As far as far as you can go. You can go eight inches. That's the best. Rototill it. But that's usually more work than you need to do for wildflowers. These are wild flowers. They will go on their own. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of raking it out. So it, there again, so that seed has a place to kind of nestle into. Uh, so when you have your seed, mix it with some mulch. This is super easy because wildflower seed is tiny. Some of it's feather, feather light. It Literally, they float. Tiny little things. And if you're just casting it out there, who knows where it's going to end up. So if you take that and mix it in a wheelbarrow or a bucket, mix it with a bag of mulch, 
uh, that way when you when you disperse it, it's going to have weight to it, so it's going to settle into the ground. And then the mulch also acts as kind of a disguise because we don't want to create very expensive bird seeds. Yeah, that's true. So if it's laying <laughs> on the ground, the bird goes, oh, look at that. You Delicious. Know, so you need to kind of hide it a little bit. Yeah. And the mulch definitely does that for you. Um, other things that they should add in while they're doing it. So you got your mulch, your wildflower seed. You recommend humic. Yep. Right Anytime that. you get seed, humic acid, humic, it's a it's a chocolate looking fertilizer, right. but it encourages deeper roots. Right. So you get better blooms on them. Mm -hmm. So that's excellent to use. Now, do you also recommend using the 744? Oh, yeah. Fresh? You got to fertilize them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. If you want flowers, you have to put your ground doesn't have nutrients. I don't know if you dug a hole or looked up. There's no worms. There's nothing good about your soil. Yeah. So you need to add that nutrient into it. And the mm -hmm. 744 all-purpose plant food adds the, the fertilizer ability. It gets you taller flowers, fuller plants, mm -hmm. more buds. Right. The Humec does the same, same thing that the fertilizer does top growth. It does it to the root growth mm -hmm. underneath. And, and then... I don't know. That's about it. So that's <laughs> that's so mulch food. Root you're <laughs> watering it. You need to initially water it. Yeah. And then you're just sporadically watering it. Well, this is that. like the best time here because right, you, uh, you don't have to water. It's like everything is done for you. But if you get a two, three week spell where it's just dry as a bone and the ground looks dusty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should water. probably keep it moist. Mm -hmm. Keep the flower beds moist. Right. Because they are seedlings as they come up. If they get dry, mm -hmm. they'll they'll keel over dead. So if you just yeah. a little bit of care with wildflowers, they start to take way. off. Yeah, it goes right. a long, long ways. A, a trick for some folks, um, take a soaker hose and just run mm -hmm. the soaker hose out along the side of the hill or down mm -hmm. the driveway. Or it can even be one that screws on to the yeah. big rubber ones, like half regular hose sure. that seeps out water. Mm -hmm. Put one of those down, pin it down. Turn it on where you see wet spots. Focus seed. your seed there and keep the, the wildflowers will go right over top of that mm -hmm. soaker hose. Right. And it's an easy way to maintain that wild patch. That, so water it infrequently. Right. Right. So we're almost out of time. So I didn't have time to cover the mixes that we carry, but we do carry four different blends. For What are they real quick? Specifically for our area. So there's deer and rabbit resistant, uh, Arizona, drought hardy. Uh, birds and butterflies, and then a poppy mix, parade of poppies. It's not just orange poppies. <laughs> right. it's, oh, it's red, big mix of poppies. white, yellow, orange, mm -hmm. and it's got everything in between. So it's a right. parade, truly a parade of poppies. Mm -hmm. And you can mix those in. Yeah, yeah. mix them together, shake and bake them, yeah. spread them out in the yard. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Great on how to plant wildflowers. You need more about that. Come in and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll walk you right through the process here at Waters Garden Center. Be right back after this.